Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 New Jersey International Film Festival Q&A series. We'll be doing a number of these to be able to have our online viewers and regular viewers check out the filmmakers. And, and many times we will have actors and screenwriters, people that are part of the crew, be part of these as well. And today we're going to be talking about a wonderful feature film that we're going to be screening at our festival in June called BB. And we have the director here, Christopher Beatty, as well as the lead actor, Elizabeth Page. And we're going to be chatting with them for the next 25 minutes or so. So sit tight. But before I, I introduce you more formally to them, um, I wanted to let you know that the 28th annual New Jersey International Film Festival will be taking place between June 2nd and June 11th on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. It'll be online and in person for most of the shows, online for all of the shows, and films are online for 24 hours on their show date. And then the in-person screenings are either at five o'clock or seven o'clock in the evening. So I'll give you more information about the festival at the end. I'll share screen and show you how you can buy tickets and stuff. But I wanted to talk to these wonderful people about their amazing narrative feature called BB. Uh, Chris, hello. Hello. Nice, nice to see you again. We we did an earlier interview on Friday for EBTV, but the Zoom Q&A is a lot longer. So Chris, maybe you can re retell how you got involved in making this film. First off, thank you for having me. Um, BB started uh, probably about a little over 10 years ago uh, with an idea, an idea that changed multiple, multiple times. Um, finally came up with um, the right formula. And my producer, Glenn Trotner and Logan Hunter, uh, it was basically the three of us for quite a while until we started uh, getting into casting and things like that came up with the idea of of a woman who sick woman who is um, dealing with a tragedy that happened many many years ago and her mental stability keeps declining as the movie um, progresses and that was my my focus on this was to show her vulner vulnerability um just just a tragic story in my eyes, and I wanted to tell it. It's a masterful film, and I think you create this incredible atmosphere, and I just loved the cinematography, the music, the acting. Everybody is really wonderful. And, you know, we, our festival is all about promoting independent films, and I really wish films like this would be able to be on every screen in every theater because... The, the garbage that's out there now is fine for like roller coaster ride type of movie, but they really don't have much content behind them. And this one has so much. And I guess my next question is to Elizabeth, how did you get involved in making and being part of the making of this film by being the lead actor? So originally I got the audition, I think a week before filming started. Wow. And the script was different than what we filmed, but it's still, it was such a page turner and I mm. wanted to get to the end. And so when I sent my audition to my agents, I was like, if they have any notes, anything at all, I'll, I'll put myself on tape and I'll change anything. Mm. And so I submitted my tape the next day. I got a call back. I think that was a Friday on Monday. I had the call back. Chris told me that we started on Friday and it was a whirlwind and we got into it. I must say Scorsese throws out most of his scripts too once he starts filming. We had Scorsese as one of our guests back in 94. Um, he did a benefit for our film festival. So we, we've been around for a long time and we've seen a lot of movies, but BB stands out to me as maybe a handful of independent features that I've seen that really tick all the boxes, you know, in terms of the way that it looks, the atmosphere it creates, the sounds, the aura. And I think you carry the movie in so many ways. And there's some really difficult scenes. I mean, the one where you're staring at this thing that's hanging up on the ceiling without giving too much away and yeah. having to kind of climb up a ladder, that must have been a little bit unnerving. Were Definitely. there any... Were I... there... 
Oh, so I'm, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Were there any scenes that you really loved filming and others that perhaps were not so um, engaging for you? Yeah. I, I mean, as an actor, to know that you can do something like that is really fulfilling. So even if you have to take yourself to a place that isn't super positive, yeah. you, after you do it, there's still such a level of like, oh my God, I did it. Like I got myself there. And so that in a level, in a way that that, that was fun. Hmm. But in terms of pure joy, I loved filming the carousel scene, hmm. to have a giant carousel that was working on a set in between takes. I was like running around on the carousel. <laughs> I, I, I mentioned to Chris last time I saw him about the first time I saw the movie, there's this big circle in the lawn and I thought it's crop circles. Mm -hmm. And then by the end, you realize that, you know, they actually brought a carousel onto this space where the house is and everything is together. So that must have been a huge undertaking. Right, Chris? It, it was it was a, a challenge um, just to go back as the script changed i mean i tailored this around the location and i mm -hmm. found the location pretty late in the process mm -hmm. um there was never a horse there was never a barn so all these things when i went to this location and this location had all these amazing um features i had to redo certain things here and there technically in the original version Mm -hmm. um, we were going to a carnival. We were going away from, you know, where Vivian lived. We were going somewhere else. We had rides. We had a fun house. We had all these crazy things, but I just, it didn't fit the character um, of Vivian. And I wanted to bring it, I wanted that claustrophobic feel to this. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, where... <laughs> The, the script really did change based on where where we shot the film. I think when, you know, when I saw the film itself and we have a small carousel that's a, a music box, a musical box that is used as a prop and as a as a kind of MacGuffin, if you like, in the film. Um, and then you have this miniature version, which, you know, transforms Victoria in the movie well, Elizabeth playing her anyway, <laughs> Vivian, <laughs> and I'm confusing my my names here. But anyway, there's that moment where you see the little carousel comes on as a musical box and it transforms her. It almost puts her in a, in a trance. Mm -hmm. a and I felt as if the film really has that as an atmosphere where you're inside her mind and you kind of get lost in all of the trauma as well as the memories that it holds. Yeah. So, I mean, when you were acting, is that something that Chris told you, you know, be like a somnambulist or I, what were some of the preps that he gave you? I think one of the things that I'm so grateful to Chris, because this is my first time leading a feature film, hmm. uh, Chris really trusted me and he was a complete collaborator and he valued my opinions and valued my thoughts and so when I brought my version of Vivian to him, he really believed in it and he let me um, kind of run with it. And if there was like an atmospheric thing or you know something that he wanted adjusted, we would do, but he really ultimately trusted me, which was incredible. That's incredible. I didn't, I didn't have many notes for, for Elizabeth. <laughs> She's always like, what can I do? I'm like, I don't have much to tell you. You're doing great. Keep going. I think you did a masterful job, Chris, because both leads, I'm just now finding out this is first features for both of you guys. And it looks like you've been doing it for years. So, yeah. Thank you. I mean, you guys just fell into the roles. You were perfect for them. The way that you ha handled yourself on camera it looks like you've been doing this for a long time. So well, I have. I mean, I've I've been in you know film and TV, and I've done so many shorts, and I was trained in theater, so I do have that background, which I'm so grateful for because I relied on it so much during this. But yeah, I I just I needed someone to trust me with it, and Chris was so amazing to be the one to do it. it you know, I think Chris, 
when you were working with these guys, I mean, I should ask you both about your background. Chris, did you go to film school? Is that where you got your film education? How did you become a filmmaker? Uh, I was an English major, um, and then I started working with a producer in L.A. very young. I was right out of college, and he pretty pretty big indie film producer. Um, before I met Glenn, um, this other other producer, he taught me pretty much everything about the business. Um, it was raw, and I, I made some independent features that I I produced. I um, I had produced a film with uh, Kira Cedric and Vincent D'Onofrio called Chlorine. Hmm. Um, I put everything together. I mean, it was kind of similar to BB, only I wasn't directing or writing it. Um, hmm. So I learned everything firsthand from you know that producer, and then when I met Glenn. Um, Glenn kind of took the reins and I really gravitated towards Glenn and mm -hmm. learned a lot from him as well and worked on some things with him. So, you know, it's, yeah. it, it was in film school. Um, and I've always been a writer. I've always written, um, screenplays and stories and, uh, you know, I wanted Ooh. to make this one. Where, where did you go to school? Uh, I went to St. Peter's in Jersey oh, city cool. and, and I finished at William Patterson, um, because I owned a, a business two minutes away and I, I needed to to be there and I finished I, I double majored in English and communication so very cool yeah I I I, I think you were, must have been very happy about St. Peter's basketball team last year I was I, I actually I actually went and I saw them beat Purdue wow, wow. yeah it was That's pretty amazing good. yeah it was <laughs> Yeah, because I, I I'm a huge basketball fan too and yeah. I, and I thought wow they'll never get past the Crazy. first round and so wow. They did, must they have been did really insane. Well. It was great. It was a pretty insane atmosphere down in Philadelphia. It was pretty, pretty wild. And, and the 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 film is dedicated to uh, Glenn, correct? Correct. Glenn <laughs> Glenn put this together with me from day one, and um, unfortunately, he passed away a year ago. Um, and I I owe the film to him, and in honor of him, and he's been so intricate i mean he found elizabeth because if i didn't have my casting director which he found stephanie holbrook i would have never even had the opportunity mm. to find elizabeth and to to make the film i i don't know if i could have had all the resources that he brought in you know the foundation pieces um which i think is is very important glenn was behind all that and i give him all the credit I mean, mentors are so crucial and, you know, I'm doing that for my students now, but I said, you're going to need more than one mentor. <laughs> you're going to need quite a few. And I think uh, it sounds like Glenn was doing that for you guys. I mean, since he had already been established, he helped make things smooth, go smoother. He made me not get so panicked. I mean, we, we lost our, our leading actress and thank God we did. Mm -hmm. um, 10 days two weeks before shooting. Um, and I'll never forget it. I'm coming back from a jog with Logan, the other producer, and we're getting ready. We're prepping for film. We're, you know, and I get a, I get a call from, from Glenn and he goes, she's out. And I'm like, what? And I, I'm, this is the first, and, and so the funny thing, he was so calm and nonchalant about it. And I'm like, aren't you nervous? He goes, no, this is normal. We'll, we'll find someone. You'll get the right person. She wasn't the right person. And that was it. <laughs> no. it's, it's so funny you lucked out because Elizabeth is great. You would never um, have known that there was somebody else in the works. It looked like she'd been there from the beginning. This movie would not be what it is. I give all I give her all the credit. Um, I stand behind her. I stand behind my decision. I stand uh, everything I, I've written. I, I, it, it's amazing when you write the screenplay, how I envisioned that character, mm. how complex she was. Elizabeth delivered that and that's why I had no notes for her because as I was shooting she was doing exactly how I wanted this to play out and my biggest concern going into this was can you know Elizabeth hold this hold the audience mm -hmm. for for two hours and I mean I, I I I was speechless on on her performance and how great she was yeah, I mean, the, you do carry the film, Elizabeth. Right. I think Judith does an excellent job, but you're definitely the focus. And I think the interaction between the two of you is really great, too. I mean, I think of Judith almost as being a kind of somnambulist because she is 
we won't uh, there are lots of spoiler potentials here so i don't want to give yeah. it away because the, the movie does have its twists and turns mm -hmm. but i think the the some of the great shots in the film and the, the people that play the younger versions of you guys too were really wonderful as well they were so good it was yeah. seeing how they carried themselves on set i can't believe there were like six and eight i think yeah, yeah, I think Rowan, Rowan just turned six, I think, yeah, which is they're, they're both really, really great, too. And yeah. uh, I guess, Elizabeth, I should ask you, you have a theatrical training. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So originally I'm from St. Paul and I wanted to be an actor forever, but no one in my family, no one I knew that just wasn't a feasible job option. Mm. And I... But I wanted it to be. So I went to NYU Tisch for acting. I graduated. I got my agent through there. And then pretty much immediately I started um, auditioning for film and TV primarily. And just have done that since and been in class trying to, you know, work on my skills. And I actually, in the callback with Chris, I was talking to him he told me the situation about how the the lead actress she dropped and she had a name and all these things and I have lost so many opportunities because I don't have a name and I just really candidly I was like I've been in this position before I know I'm not a name I know I can do it mm -hmm. and immediately Chris was like that pisses me off that this has happened to you you're in and I was like, huh, okay, great. I'll fly back. I'll fly to New York tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. so we're going to help make a name for you too, because I think you deserve it. And you remind me a little bit of Naomi Watts, because Naomi Watts also was looking for the gig and it yeah, wasn't right. working out. And then just that by chance, David Lynch gives her a call and then boom, she's doing Mulholland Drive as a lead. And she had just done bit parts before. Yeah, and right. that, that launched her career. So you never know. Yeah, totally. Every little inch is is worth something. Well, you definitely carry the, the film in many ways. And I, I wanted to ask Chris, you talked about The Shining when we talked on EBTV. And I definitely thought of the the mansion that you shot in, which is in Bernardsville, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That It definitely has a really great aura. And I found out it was Mike Tyson's old place. So that gave it even more mystique. Right. But I guess I, I I I wondered if there were other films that perhaps popped into your mind when you were writing it and when you were actually shooting it too. Were there other movies that influenced you? Um, not not really, not I really. Mean, I'm sorry I, to put you on the spot. I mean, well, because I'm I'm trying to think of of my inspiration behind this. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was the script itself. It I I wasn't really gravitating towards towards anything. I I loved Kubrick. I loved mm -hmm. my my whole idea with this was to always keep the camera moving in BB, mm -hmm. even if you you don't notice. I always wanted things moving, and I wanted that slow build. I mean, that was my my goal behind this. I love I love his work. I love what he he does. Was he an inspiration? Sure. He yeah. you know Kubrick has always been an inspiration for me, mm -hmm. but. Once I started writing the script and once I I've been through so many drafts, um, once I finally found the pieces, I put the pieces together towards the end. I, I kind of lost myself within the script and it, it, that that was my inspiration. Mm -hmm. It was it was clinging to to Vivian Ashwood um, and to BB and, and those characters. And I, you know. I, I just went with it. I wanted, like you said, there's a lot of things on TV I'm not I'm not fond of. I wanted to do something, you know, yeah. I don't want to say old school, but something that we don't usually get to see nowadays. Yeah, yeah it's very atmospheric film. I think it definitely starts slow, mm -hmm. but I think once you start to realize and you see these flashbacks when um, Vivian was a child and she has a sister and it seems like there's the potential for an abusive um, um, you know, relationship with the father. Right. All these things are set up from the very beginning and you're not really sure how they're gonna uh, pan out in the film. And, and again, without uh, spelling it out, I think the atmosphere you create does build and the camera movement, the handheld camera movement, definitely facilitate this kind of spiral or descent that uh, Vivian is going through. Um, 
But, you know, I, I, I wanted to say the other aspect that I wrote down in my notes, and I said that at, at one point I thought it was all inside of her mind, that it, everything was a fiction. Was that something from the get-go, or was that something that was fleshed out while you were making the film? Or um, without giving anything away, um, yeah. it... It, it was in, in her mind. It was, um, I'm trying not to give anything away. With, yeah, yeah, with, don't. But um, it was her world. It was her, it was her um, place of comfort. It was her safety, safety valve. And she never wanted to, I wanted to create this, this world for her where this is, this is her life. And then, it, then you'll see glimpses of, of reality um, in a few of the scenes, but this is where she functions. This is how she, she lives her, her daily routine. Yeah. And I, I wanted to show that um, through different, many different layers, um, you know, BB being one of them and Dr. Grayson and, and bringing in these, these pieces, but she needs to live this way for her to get from, you know, when she wakes up till she goes to sleep, this is how she survives, you know, and functions. I also think that I, sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I, was gonna say, I also think that a lot of people that have seen, you know, different variations of the film so far, mm -hmm. they leave arguing what their interpretation of the movie is. Mm -hmm. And so some of them think one thing, others think the exact opposite. And it's just the layers that Chris built in this movie uh make it up to interpretation yeah i think that's another plus the judges really like the open-endedness mm -hmm. of the film and that you know everything is not spelled out for you and that that's yeah. really we want to champion that type of cinema so yeah. it was a no-brainer for us and it was one of the first films we selected so we knew that's we were cool. going to show this pretty early on we got 711 entries. We're only showing 35 and only five features. We got 150 features. So, you know, it's it's really competitive, but we're always looking for really interesting, creative, intelligent films. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Chris, you did a masterful job because as a guy making a film focusing on a woman is very difficult, but you're obviously a sensitive guy. So I'm, I'm very you, sensitive. you did a great job. <laughs> All right. Thank let, you. Let me just uh, share screen with our audience so we can show you how to buy tickets for this great movie. Uh, share screen, there you go. So let's see, I have to do this. All right, it's not very good. All right. And so we'll share. So normally um, you would click on our website, which is njfilmfest.com. And when you get to our homepage, you'll see, this is the actual building where we'll be screening the film in the background. It's for Voorhees Hall. And you would basically go down a little bit and you'll see um, the same image that's behind me, which is the cover art for our festival. And you would click on buy tickets and That'll bounce you to our Eventive website. We are partnered with Eventive. We've been with them for three years. They saved us during the pandemic because the only way we could do the festival is remotely. And uh, I called a couple of my festival friends, what are you doing? And they said, well, I'm, we're using Eventive because there were a number of other providers. And so we've stuck with them and now Sundance is using them as well. So they do a great job and they'll be streaming all the films for us. And this is the welcome page. The welcome page gives you basic information. It's kind of vanilla. It tells you about the staff and where you can get tickets and things like that. And there's four red buttons and you can click on all four of them. To buy tickets, you click on this one and it bounces you to our catalog page. And the catalog page has all of the programs listed by subject. So for narrative feature, we would go to this one and the wonderful, we're used, we made postcards, Elizabeth, so you're, you're, you're on all of these. We'll get some to you when you come to the screen. Awesome. And there's so many wonderful stills, but we ended up using this one for um, this page. And you would just click on learn more to find out more about the film. And they give you all the basic information, the blurb about the movie and the, the actors. And you would just click on pre-order now. And you can only buy one ticket at a time, which I know is a pain, but 
Um, since we're delivering the movies online, we need to have separate email addresses. And that's the reason for that. There is a way to be also able to buy bulk tickets. And I'll show you that in a second. But that's where you would go to buy tickets for this film. If you wanted to get basic information about the festival too, there's a linear schedule where you scroll down and each program is divided by a red line and you make your way down and you can see, oh, there's a typo, outs instead of hours, we'll have to fix that. Um, but here it says that it'll be online for 24 hours and in person at 7 p.m. And so you'll be able to go to our site on Rutgers campus. You can also go to the menu for more information there too. But all the films will be taking place at that location, which is Voorhees Hall, room 105 on the Rutgers University campus at 71 Hamilton Street, New Brunswick, New Jersey. This screening is at seven. General admission is 15 bucks, but you get so much for the $15. You can watch the movie online and come in person. And in fact, we have a number of people that do that. There's one fellow, he started the trend. He would watch it during the day and then come in the evening to hang out with us and with the filmmakers and the actors. And he would, he would know the film so well, he'd ask so many great questions. And now more people are doing that too. And um, there's gonna be a number of the actors there and the producers, and you'll be able to interact with the team that made BB um, on June 3rd, it's a Saturday night at seven o'clock. I'm gonna stop share so I can come back and see you guys. So that's how you can buy tickets. Um, the, there'll be a Q&A at the end of the screening too. And so it'll be a lot of fun. And I hope you can come and join us for this wonderful screening. I mean, it's one of my favorite films. I told Chris that there's a handful of films that I've shown since we've been doing indie films for the last two decades, and BB is one of them. I want to write a book about indie films that were made with a lot of love that, you know, hopefully we'll make it out into the world, but they don't know once they hit the festival scene, there's a lot of X factors and a lot of politics to deal with. But our festival is a filmmakers festival. We're here to show good movies. And I hope you can come and join us on June 3rd at 7 p.m. for the in-person screening of BB. Come meet Elizabeth, Christopher, Judith, and so many of the other folks that are part of this film at the screening. And I want to say thank you to both of you for hanging out with me for the last 25 minutes. It's been thank a real treat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, too.